I felt disrespected on every level. So that was 15 year old American Grandmaster Christopher Yu speaking after round two of the US Championships 2022. Now these were played in October last year and he was so upset because after round one when Yu and Neiman had played, Neiman had given this interview after beating Christopher. I think that this game is a message. You know, this entire thing started with me saying chess speaks for itself and uh, I think this game spoke for itself. Let's discuss the I'm game sorry, a little that's a, bit. That's it, but uh, you, huh? know, you can leave it to your interpretation, but thank you. That is that's it, all yes. you want to that's say That's all I'd like today. to say, yes. Okay, because it was such a beautiful game, I don't even need to describe it. So there were a few jumps there where I cut out some of the ums and the ahs, but you get the idea. A big rivalry was developing between these two players, and it became known as the Disrespect Championships because of various goings on during the tournament. Now, fast forward to this game that I'm showing you in this video. So this is taken from the World Rapid Championships, which were played in December, so about two and a half months after the US Championship, and it was the first time that these two players had sat down and played over the board. So a lot of tension, Christopher Yu looking for revenge for that loss. Could he do it with the black pieces? Let's see what happened. So hands kicked off with pawn to d4. We had knight f6, c4, e6, and after knight c3 from hands, he's inviting the main line Nimzo Indian, named after Aaron Nimzovich, but we don't have that. We have d5 going back into a queen's gambit declined, and now hands captures on d5, the pawn recaptures, and he goes bishop to g5 bringing the bishop outside the pawn chain, preparing to go e3. Now the standard traditional move here is bishop e7, breaking the pin. We also see a lot of pawn to c6, but here we see bishop b4, and it's much more thematic with the kind of ragazin variation. Now it's not quite a ragazin because the knight isn't yet on f3. If hands brought the knight to f3, we'd be back in a ragazin. But instead we see e3, and after pawn to h6, we now get all of the same ideas at play because Hans doesn't capture the knight. That is possible, a bit more positional, but he retreats and we get this really tactical stuff now with pawn to g5. So why is black playing so loosely, lashing out with those pawns? Well, knight e4 is the follow-up idea. You immediately put pressure on c3 and often black wants to follow with these pawn advances, sometimes f5, gaining a lot of rapid space. So this knight is attacked. Now how many of us would go queen c2 or rook c1, you know, defend that piece? Well Hans does neither, he goes pawn to a3. Now what's the idea of this? Because after knight captures, which wasn't played, it looks like you're just curtains. Your queen is attacked, so there's no time to take the bishop or you lose your queen. And if you recapture that knight, well okay, you're simply running into this, it's terrible, you're losing the exchange. But here's the trick. Once the knight captures on c3, you can either go queen d2 or queen b3. But it's a similar idea that you step the queen away from the knight's attack and then counterattack on both pieces. So you're going to win one of them back. And even though there's a discovered check, you know, you could come here, it doesn't matter because then you capture the bishop. Different lines to show, but all of them are good for white. So that's why we didn't see that capture on c3 with the knight. Instead, the bishop took, the pawn took back, and now there's a new question. Well, why doesn't the knight take here and win a pawn? Well, this time it's because the queen can come to the c file. Queen c1, also possible. But the idea is the knight retreats and then this pawn drops. You could also take with the bishop. And this is better for white. There's now a better pawn structure. You've split these pawns. Good position for white. So the pawn not captured. H5 played instead. And now more tactics at play. Hold on to your hats. So the bishop is about to get trapped. Hans ignores it. He goes queen c2. But Christopher doesn't trap the bishop. Why not? Well, if you go pawn to h4, there's then bishop e5, f6. Where does the bishop go? Well, it doesn't go anywhere. You counterattack this knight once again. This is the key. And this is why the queen came to c2. It now covers the pawn, so there's no knight takes on c3. Then you just take back straight away. So the line could go something like this. Again, it's a bit better for white. 
So that's why the bishop didn't get trapped. We just see this knight developing here, and it looks a bit weird standing in front of the C pawn, but there are often ideas to recycle this knight into the game via E7, maybe then into F5 or back to D6 and so on. You've always got to look at the circuit that your knight could go on. So F3 now played. Hans wants that knight out of his house. It captures here. Pawn recaptures, queen d6 now played, so it targets that pawn, and Hans now doesn't defend it, he advances it with pawn to g4. And you might wonder, well, why not deliver this check? And you can do so, but it's not very good. White simply blocks, and if you retreat the queen, well, you're just wasting time. And if you take, this is good for white, they've sorted their king's safety, they've got this nice big center. So, the queen didn't come in here. Now, there's pressure on this pawn, white's threatening to win it and you can't capture because of the pin against the rook. So it kicks on like this, and now knight h3 from hands, another good move, attacks this one. We normally say putting a knight on the edge is bad, but here it does have a route to come back into the game. This is one of the key things. Now, it gets even more tactical, right? So the computer's top move here is actually bishop d7, preparing to castle queenside. This is key. But Christopher goes knight to e7 here, and now he sets a trap. So if you take this pawn, and the computer doesn't mind this move when you're running it, but then it sees that actually f5 gets a bit problematic, with the point being, the key point anyway, that white can't capture that pawn, or then you deliver a check and you're picking up the knight on the next move. So if you can't capture the pawn, well then it's a bit annoying. Because say you carry on with the bishop development like we see in the game, well black's winning the pawn back, or if you go to say here and try and defend, again black can take, you don't really want to take here. For one thing the queen can check and then you win the pawn back, but you're also splitting your pawns, no good. So coming back to the game, we didn't see the pawn on g5 captured. Instead we just see the bishop carrying on with the development. Now pawn f6, again the computer just wanted bishop d7 there, get ready to castle. Now Hans had the option of checking here, ruining the castling rights. We're not going to go down this rabbit hole, but long story short, it says that white is wasting a bit of time and the king is okay there. Maybe you go c6, king c7 in due course, okay, game goes on. But Hans just castles instead and this is where Christopher makes his big mistake. Again, bishop d7, castles queenside, order of the day. But he castles kingside. Look at the eval bar swing. Because now white is coming through with this avalanche of pawns. Now you can actually start with e4 straight away and give up this pawn potentially. But Hans goes queen e2 first. So he x-rays this one, protects it, then prepares this e4 stuff, recaptures with the f pawn if black takes. And look at the clock times now. So Hans really builds up time on the clock here. He is good in that respect. Bishop e6 now played, again bishop d7 was preferred, because now e4 comes and the bishop really stands in front of these pawns as a target, plus it now blocks the rook when it comes to this e-file to eyeball this white queen. And black didn't take there by the way, because queen takes was also a good option, or pawn takes just keeping going with the pawn mass. But now, in this position, you're running into pawn to e5, and black's really got problems, because both of these points are attacked. So taking is forced, now the pawn recaptures, and although black gets the check, after the king sidesteps, there's just no way to add pressure against the white king. You know, you'd love to go, say, knight g6, f4, but the bishop covers that square, so the knight hops here, but now this knight takes on g5, there was no way to protect that pawn, and everything's collapsing. So you could take here. Instead, we see the bishop drop, but really, however black plays, this same f4 move is coming, and white's got three connected past pawns. This is the big problem. So the queen took on c3. The rook now came to c1, picking up more tempos, even at the cost of a pawn. And now this is a very instructive moment, because as the white player here, you want to go pawn to f5. But if you do that straight away, you drop the e-pawn. So why wouldn't you then go pawn e6? Well, Hans does want to do that move. But if he does that one straight away, then the pawn can be attacked with, say, rook to f6. And if you defend like this, very, very logical, well, now you've blocked out your bishop. Imagine if the bishop was here or here instead. So running back here, this is why we first see the check. Now the king goes to the corner, if it came to g7, you're running into queen c2, g6, these kind of problems. So it sidesteps. 
Now we see the bishop come back, hit the rook. It comes to e7 and pawn e6. Hans is executing on the plan. And he's also now vacating this square for his queen. So there's no knight d4, for example. You'd be picking up a loose piece. So queen g3 was played. It converges on this pawn. Use desperately looking for counterplay. And you might think here that Hans kicks on with pawn to f5. But no, he plays something much more direct and brutal. So can you guess what he played in this position to really crash through the attack? So the move he plays is rook takes on c6, a very logical idea because if it was recaptured, which didn't happen, this is just a deadly check basically. Now if the king sidesteps, you're constantly running into this bishop f7 check stuff and you're forced to give up the rooks and everything like that and even then the mate is still coming. And whoops, sorry, coming back here, check. And if instead of stepping sideways with the king, you block with the rook, well, again, then you're running into problems with this pass pawn. Rooks are about to drop off the board. The attack is still raging. And the black queen can never even give a perpetual over here. So there's not much to calculate. So instead, the king stepped to g7, preparing to meet the queen check with taking this bishop. But now the bishop saved itself. Still, the check is coming and it's deadly. So the rook can't be captured. So we see captures on f7 played. The knight recaptured. And again, if the rook is taken, this is a big problem. If you step here, well, then we mate like this. And if you go a different way, so say you step back here, well, this is checkmate in one. You can simply come down here. It's just all over, all variations. So the king steps back like this, anticipating the queen e5 check. But now it comes anyway, threatening mate in one. And so the rook is forced to give itself up clear a square for the king but this is hopeless check and here we had resignation because if the knight is captured well then there's this check here now if the king steps up the board well we can check like this and it leads to mate in fact so that's mate in one and if the rook blocks well now we check from the other side king goes you take and again pick your poison here you can check mate here or you can check mate here so brutal stuff from hans neiman you didn't get his revenge on this day I hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to see another devastating Hans Niemann game, then check out the video on screen. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.